All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another cast here in Cosmonarchy Land, aka Pronogo's YouTube channel. Welcome. I am Pronogo. I am the lead designer and main man here with, of course, a lot of help from a whole lot of other people. But it's me, the engine, making daily videos for you and your entertainment. So subscribe if you're not already. And check out this match between Hit'em Up and Crankendow. Hit'em Up, also known as Leviathan. You might have known him in the StarCraft 1 space. We got a best of three here on none other than Genesis Y with Crankendow, the Zerg in the top right, and Shambler's Corpse, also known as Hit'em Up in the bottom right, who seems to be going for a six stockade. I'm not really 100% sure. Yeah, he is. He's going for a six stockade. That's, you know what? Hats off. Let's see what happens. So. Cranking down over here. I'm going to guess this is yet again maroon. It is. Okay, I'm getting a little bit better at guessing maroon instead of blood. We've got two colors that look pretty similar, and Crankendow likes them both. Meanwhile, over here, this is ultramarine, surely. It is indeed. All right. I agree with what uh, Shambler's Corpse is typing, um, which is more than I can say about what I, uh, whether or not I agree uh, with uh, what Shambler, when he's not a corpse, is typing. So that's pretty interesting. I think Eidolons are actually pretty good. Uh, he, he did ping me, the actual Shambler, not the corpse, uh, where he pinged me saying something like, uh, your favorite unit is meta now or something. And I was at work and all I typed back was Eidolons question mark, but he could have been talking about Cyclops. Like I honestly have no idea what unit he was referencing. Uh, he could have been talking about a lot of units, but, uh. <clears throat> For those who don't know, another caster and recent champion of Acropolis number one, as well as Ascension number seven last year, Neblime, down from Aussie, Aussie land. Uh, he actually has been a, a guy who is very... Uh, vocal about his distaste for units like the Cyclops, and indeed like the Eidolon. He, uh, he he respects that they might have some opportunity, some idea, some chance, but he uh, also thinks that they're maybe a little bit uh, too weak or something, right? That's what his historical position has been. I don't want to put words in his mouth about right now. And uh, he also likes Harakans, so it's very fitting that that's the first unit out of the six stockade uh, from... Mr. Shambler's Corpse, a.k.a. hit him up. But, uh, yeah, Neblime has been uh, a proponent of uh, the anti-Cyclops society, you could think of them as. Uh, and, uh, you know, th that became a bit where I would always say, dude, Cyclops are insanely powerful and busted and broken. Uh, and I would indicate that in, like, thumbnails and stuff like that. And he would just be like, dude, I love all the daily content. I really respect it. But Cyclops are not it. Meanwhile, Harakans apparently are it. <clears throat> Remember that this is before the pool even finishes. Such is the situation. And this Ahmed is just going to sit here and be annoying. Hold position on the mineral line. I'm sure at some point he'll be annoying instead of just a statue. There we go. He's, he's doing some heckling. A little bit of damage was dealt earlier. But he's got some armor and he's got some health. So, oh, there you go. Yeah, I was going to say, what's he doing? He's not attacking. That's what he's doing. Now, the, uh, the Zether Cores have indeed popped out. So that'll be taken care of. Not as uh, glorious a demise as we wanted to see for Ahmed, but uh, for those who don't know, another inside joke, another inside baseball bit. We've got uh, Harakan and Ahmed are the same thing. So if you hear me say Ahmed, I'm talking about the Harakans. This uh, secondary Kagrant, I don't know if that was going to be for a circuit or something like that, uh, but uh, it can easily be repurposed to a... A tertiary larva production facility for the Zerg, a production cell, as they are called internally. Zets are going to arrive over here and see a lot of Ahmeds, a trio, in fact, uh, a, a quattro of Ahmeds. So that's interesting. And uh, some Quasis are finally on the way. But I don't know that Crankadow can really do too much to bust. He should just be a little bit ahead economically. Uh, and uh, the quarry is out now, so we'll see what Hit'em Up can do with that. He said that he's uh, not decided what race he wants to main, so to speak. Uh, he, he, of course, uh, just like everybody else, wants to try the Escozi when they're available and ready. Uh, and let's just say there's some exciting developments on that front that I'll keep tight-lipped on for now. But uh, he's he's somebody who's a, a fan of that. And I'm a fan of that, too. Uh, but for now, he's also a big fan of uh, playing as Terran and likes to make bio work and stuff and try it anyway. Uh, but he also likes to play Protoss and just A-move, right? And so who doesn't like a little A-move here and there? All right, the Kagrant has been ferried over to the natural, and that's pretty good. I mean, it will provide a little bit of coverage. You you obviously want that versus the bio move out. We have some Cyprians coming as well. Very interesting uh, that he'd go for that. I, it's the crowd control in a ranged format as opposed to the melee format. And this one Zeth is only going to see the Harakans, but here's the Avaleth to spot for these units moving across the map. Uh, and they will get hung up on, you know, the Cyprians are very slow, and so they're going to be even more out of sync than they would have been otherwise. Might be an opportunity for... Uh, Shambler's corpse to get exploited uh, by just a couple of Zets. You, you know, f further delayed now, it's just the Harakans. They can't really siege anything. And that's going to make Crankendow feel a little bit safer. He's going to cancel both in progress circuits, Kagrins, before they can become them. The Avaleth continuing to heckle this position. 
And uh, it'll go in for a scout. That will mean that it will die. Oh, man, it was like two hits away from the, the Cyprians killing it. So, uh, But it won't escape. You can see it there. Yeah, one hit away. GG on that front. But you know what? It's not It's not about uh, whether or not the Avaleth lives or dies. It's about what the Avaleth sees. And it didn't see whether there was an expansion coming, right? It's going to be double covenant out of Hit Him Up. He's, he's killed the Avaleth. And so now, with Krankadao going for the Zorkas, this is a gas-expensive structure that does afford you Lachizalisks, but those are gas-expensive units. And so if Krankadao doesn't remake his Avaleth, the surprise Eidolon hit can absolutely be a pretty big, you know, very high, I would say, high-impact move here. Uh, it's going to be Savants instead. That's going to be a bit more, I love the distance mining the ridge. <laughs> um, the, the Savant push instead is a little bit more reliable, uh, but it, it's basically less coin flippy, I guess you can think of it as. Like, it's not going to auto win you the game uh, the way that Eidolons could have potentially, uh, but it is going to provide you with the uh, more steady ability. It's like essentially forcing your opponent away from reliance on the Quaz units, which I feel like Cyprians in enough number do as well. Savants are just a, a little bit more mobile and a little bit more um, versatile because when they do pull out like the Zorius or even the Lakes, uh, you can steal their attack speed. And then, you know, it, by the way, if anybody's played Savants and they've ever decided that they want to go for like, they, they're, they're gonna switch them off for, of Entropy Gauntlets, which is the crowd control into the attack speed, Power Siphon. And then they get to max stacks of Power Siphon, and then they feel like they're in a position where they actually need to switch over to crowd control. And they do the switch with max attack speed and just start blazing out all of the units. It's just like a mow down, dude. It's a slug fest slaughterhouse. It's uh, all sorts of ridiculous words that you could use for that. and. It is just absurd. <clears throat> Starpad coming behind the double Eidolon uh, switch over. Got two more stockades coming as well. Nice saturation overall, scaling up the economy for both players. And the Lakizalisks are out. The Zorius is indeed out as well. So a little bit of tanking. And the Harakans are dispatched on their own as a bit of a forward scout. They are the fastest unit available. You know, I'm assuming you're not counting stimmed Mavericks, of course. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that'll be pretty good. You know, they'll just confirm no third bases on the way, at least not in the traditional spot on this map. It's cool to see this map get a, a number of games played. Obviously, we saw a ZVZ between Krankendow and Jackie Lenski, joined uh, by Dominic Cast, aka Shadow Fury 333, which, by the way, if you have three threes in your name, you gotta be part of the No Frauds Club. It's just like the way that's uh, I'd say that's like a law of the universe, you know? Another Avaleth has been made. So it is spying on the savants here, but I'm not so sure that it spotted the Eidolons. And you know what? If you see Covenant usage, you might go for a secondary Avaleth anyway, just to follow your army around. Now look at this. Are the Harakans going to steal a Lachizalisk away? The answer is going to be a big fat no. Very fitting for uh, the uh, the Ahmed move in general. These savants are like trying to chase down the Avaleth, and now the, uh, the Eidolons have given up the game, I think. Uh, but let's see. Let's see what uh, Krankendow wants to do. He's trying to be a little bit more on the aggro side. Now you can see him sending out double expansion attempt, try to get rid of his resources. He's going to go ahead and take the third and the top left base as his army moves a little bit further forward. The Avaleth brought down to only 80 points of health, and the Anseal is here for detection, so the Lachizalisks aren't really going to be able to do too much from this spot. Don't want to lose the Zorius if you can afford it. A single Gorgacore as well. Might might have been decided as like an option to be anti anseal right? You just, uh, if you can get on top of any of the bio, you, you chew through the shielding because you're dealing damage to all the units the Anseal is shielding. Uh, could be a, an option there. I wonder how Zerg are going to try to combat the Anseal in general because I feel like you could probably go for like Nathrocores or something. There's not really, I mean, the problem is in this situation, there's a lot of anti-air splash with the Savants and the Cyprians. So, there is that. All right, here come the Lake Kids. They're kind of going in on their own, but they are still enough to kill an Eidolon and a Savant. Got to watch out for that. The Gorgacore immediately snipes, so it won't be anti uh, Anseal after all. The Shaman's now coming over for a deployment, but they're quickly going to be overwhelmed. And another Anseal on the rotation. It's going to get sniped up by all the Quasis. Backed into a bit of a corner here is Hit'em Up. Has to fall on back to the Mineral Line and see if he can power on through the Zorius that are blocking his uh, penetrating shots. The lake is uh, busy attacking the Harakans for the first couple of volleys there. And it does not It does look like he gets the cancel off on the treasury at the very least. But, you know, he had a lot of money in the bank, so to speak. And uh, he was not able to, to make it work there. Uh, and so you look at the amount of stockades he's got. 
it's going to be a while before he can, you know, produce the same number of units that are coming to his doorstep, courtesy of Crank, who's got 10 more Zoryus on the way. So I guess he's, he's planning on kind of slapping him to death, right? There's not really any economy uh, for hit him up to scale up, but there's also not really that much DPS from Crank and Do's army to do damage, right? So he's making a lot of more workers. He wants to just kind of win more from this position. And you talk about this kind of thing a lot. Do you continue attacking forward when some of your Lakes are a little bit low, when your opponent is going to have some tools? I mean, there's a lot of Harakans here. I would love to see like six or seven Eidolons in this position just to snipe the uh, Lakes. They're very, very good for that. Uh, Aud actually came up with that. I, I mentioned as like an idea. Like, oh, maybe you could use Anseal Eidolon to snipe Lakes. And you can see right here, it is a thing that works. So, you know, slowly but surely, these... Uh, these units will be taken down. It's just a single guy with a pepper gun, but eventually he'll uh, he'll break them. He'll break them eventually. I roll Iris coming on. I mean, that's basically because of the, like, you can just see very clearly here that uh, the, the containment is up. You got four bases. You're harvesting gas from the top left, and you've got okay saturation in the third, okay saturation in the natural, and okay saturation in the main. This is kind of what happens with Zerg, right? Um, you know, when you're building a lot of military anyway, trying to enforce the contain. Again, so many Zorius, but we have no Hydras yet. We have no, we only have three Lakes on the way and three Lakes on the field. So it feels like there's not really that much that uh, is going to endanger the military here, especially once those Lakes are dealt with. There's only two of them on the field, actually, correct my math earlier. Harakin's starting to burn down the armor of the Zorius. Now they're going to see if they can engage. Uh, but the clerics, the shamans are going to be good for sustain. And at some point when the Ansel reveals this position, yeah, those guys are dead meat. Yeah, sure, a couple of Mavericks went down, but that's actually it so far. And uh, that will break the contain nice and easy. And Crankadon needs to figure out what he's going to do for DPS. I mean, sure, it's great to have the uh, the Lakizalus, because they certainly slow your army down, your enemy down. Ministry was made and is going to go ahead and get lifted off for a quarry. That's going to put him up to five worker production every 15 seconds once that quarry finishes. So in about 30 seconds, we'll have that operational for hit him up. And his opponent is going to go for the Hydrath Den, after all. We'll be upgrading the Quasath Pool directly into the Calcure Lake. Now, what that means is that we're going to be able to see Lirilisks, a favorite of Crank and Dow's. He's actually been, uh, you know, paving the way a little bit of, of the Lirilisk uh, revolution. Not very many people were using them. Uh, same, I would say, for the Protathlores a little bit, but uh, I know that uh, sometimes you would see those out of Neblime, for example. Anseal very, very far forward, not able to facilitate the destruction of one of those Lakizalisks. We got plenty of Zorius over here, and we do indeed have something like eight Lakizalisks on that high ground. So Hit up thinks twice about going in that position. He's going to end up hemorrhaging a couple of units on the retreat, but nothing too big. You can still kind of shark up uh, northbound, single Harakan watching for the exit. And indeed, yeah, the eight Lakizalisks over there. Not really that much in terms of static defense on the third base. And look at this, a big engagement, but the Harakans are able to step on these Lakizalisks to reveal them. And now it's just the Zoryus. No damage to speak of here for Crankendow. He's going to lose all of his military forces in the middle of the map. Is it enough, right? I mean, he does a scar with a couple of those Zorius. Is it going to be enough time to get those Lyralisks up? I mean, at the very least, he's got his uh, enhanced static defense. That's pretty okay for crowd control in the third, but he needs way more than just two or three, uh, counting the one behind the mineral line there. The one Zeth over here is actually gonna kill a Maverick, funnily enough. No stim, no, mi no micro. Okay, all the Harakans are kind of disparate over here, but the Cyprians with the cliff advantage are still going to be more than enough to overwhelm this small number of Lyralisks. Many more have been made a bit north. They are going to fall on back and see if they can hemorrhage some of these units and actually hit them up is starting to get drawn into a bit of a split force. He does clear out the Zorius behind him. Another base was planned on being taken by Crankendow, sort of upper nine o'clock area. But it looks to me like Crankendow is going to be able to overwhelm after all. No more detection. The Anseals are gone, the Shamans are gone, and as he completely uh, turns and tightens the noose there around the Cyprians, it's down to whatever hit him up can build under short notice. I wasn't really paying too much attention, but it looks like he's still on tier one. Yeah, no Atlas. And as a result, I mean, he's got a lot of Covenants, producing a lot of Eidolons, a lot of Harakans, and a couple of Mavericks here and there just for, for fodder. Gonna go up to attempt a fourth base take as the fifth is coming up for Crankendow. Oh, look at this. There's a fraudulent uh, town center marker here from Biddy B. I can't believe it. The one Zetha hiding underneath there, tickling it to death. Not actually going to uh, commit to that base, though, unfortunately. The one Zeth was actually enough for that. Because I think this guy's just on patrol, yeah. So that's pretty interesting. Oh, yeah, it's the same one that killed the, the Maverick earlier. Dude, that's an MVP, uh, MVP Zeth, honestly. 
Eidolons popping the only detection that Crankadao has in the area, and they are in enough number that I think Crankadao should invest in Iroleths, the upgraded Avaleth, for a better detection, faster detection. Here's the Lyralisks to try to pick down this treasury. Kind of read the position. Like, I know that you don't have the bottom left, so that's where you're going to go next. Only one Lakizalisk in the area. There's another one on the high ground that can be deployed at some point. Not actually happening just yet. And uh, what is Crankadao going to do as he tries to fall on back? The Harakan count very high. Bounce is still working out okay. The one Lakizalisk doing plenty of damage here. Going to see if it can carve in. And those Eidolons can fall to it, so you got to watch out. But now back on the high ground, it looks like it's going to be enough to deal with what's visible. All the visible targets are gone. Oh no, the Eidolon stepping a little bit too close, I think. That's going to be much too close for comfort. You got to watch out. They do end up falling quite fast. More HP than a Maverick, but only just. Workers transferring over to upper nine. Still no fourth base in sight. I mean, the treasury actually made it over there, but the Zeth killed it. Not exactly ideal for hit him up. He does feel like his back is against the wall. Charges out forward yet again with another set of military units. But as soon as Crankadao sets his eyes on this position, that, yeah, the little stab forward with the extra ones, that's going to be more than enough. Waypointing many Quasilisks forward. I think at this point, it would definitely be more efficient if he had some Oxalcesians or uh, some Kafirlosks so that he could make the Lyralisks from the, and the Tetsorokors and stuff directly from the start. But it's still tier one. So he doesn't realize, maybe, that uh, there's no captaincies coming. He would just kind of assume, you know, you've been on three bases for a while. You're probably going to go to tier two. And indeed, that's not the case. That is uh, that is very much not the case. And we indeed have uh, just a tier one spam ministry on the way. I like that that's the pattern. You lose the treasury in the attempt or have to cancel it or whatever. And so uh, you go for a ministry instead because uh, it'll be easier to stay alive, right? That's pretty interesting. If he goes for another quarry, yeah, that's one of those areas where I feel like it would be unironically useful to have a lodestone. I mean, it gives you detection and you can put some units in it. Anyway, the Harakans are going to engage in here and the Lakizalisks are immediately taken out. This far army is a lot more formidable and I like this engage a lot better for hit -em up But the Lyralisk bounces are still going to be good enough, especially with the cliff advantage, that I feel like it might be a little bit awkward here. His Harakan count was uh, dealt with relatively fast. He had no sustain with the army. And I think this is going to be GG in the first game of our set. He cannot proceed the tier one Gambit. I mean, we saw it out of him versus Arbus. He took it very, very close on Scoria Potamos. Uh, I think this is the name of the map anyway. And that is a situation where Crankin now gets on the board. Nice to see him do that versus the tier one experiment, if you want to call it that, where he just guns it for, for nonstop tier one. Love to see that sort of play. Uh, you know, I, I like to see it attempted. Uh, it's definitely a, a matter of, I, I'm sure he, he would just say he was horsing around or whatever. But I like the idea, like, can you limit test that? Can you make that work? Well, right now the answer was no, but he left mech untouched. He left tier two untouched. I'm guessing that the next couple of games will be a little bit different. Let's see what happens behind door number two. All right, hit him up has rolled Protoss in the top right of Genesis Y. He will be, is this just straight up green or is this one of those vine green, dark green things? Dark green, okay. And it will be the Maroon Zerg in the bottom right, Crankendow. And just to confirm it, it is indeed Maroon. It's always gonna be Maroon. Uh, I, I think, I don't think hit him up uses the color selector in uh, config, so. He'll never, if it's just the two, v, two of them, you know, like 1v1 uh, one one or whatever, then you are in a, an interesting position. Uh, oh, look at this. He's going to go for a bit of a cheeky wall. This is like StarCraft II's t tactics or something. Uh, with the way that he, like, harvested the mineral and then started to return it. <laughs> I don't know. Something about that reminded me of how you do that in StarCraft II. Anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying Cosmonarchy. Uh, indeed, you can pick from our one of our 100-plus colors if you uh, so desire. Uh, some of them, obviously, not going to be visible. You can't pick black, for example. It's invisible on the minimap. Uh, or maybe I could make it like a gray on the minimap or something, and then it wouldn't be so bad. Maybe I'll try to do that. Let me know if you guys think that would be reasonable. Gateway as part of the wall. Obviously, you got to tighten this up with a zealot or something. Uh, and over here, I think this is a warden size, or maybe you could do like an embassy link at some point. Something like that, right? Uh, at, at any rate, workers meet each other in the middle. Not going to be a bunch of, uh, you know, like, it, it's not going to be a... Uh, very fast, like cheesy six thing, right? Like I have seen six gate and Neblime did it to Benno in the uh, Royal Invitational back in uh, earlier in, in last month, right? March or May. I always confuse May and March. I don't know why. I swear I'm not in middle school anymore, but that part of my brain has never figured it out. Crank it down now, scouting around. See, so okay, you got a forward gate. What do I do from that? It will be a Larvosk and a Quasath pool. So very bog standard. Oh, look at this. I like the cheek. Like, what are you going to do? I'm just going to attack this. 
and you're gonna have to deal with it. Very interesting. Very interesting. I wonder how much HP the the trans transfer is. I know you get uh, 40 more max HP. Does that mean you just get healed for 40 HP effectively? Yeah, okay, that's exactly what happens. Interesting. Well, uh, still not going to be shown away. I mean, you're talking about 150 health, so he's going to deal 100 damage to this bad boy, right? You can see the, the damage amount getting pretty high. So that's going to be it for now. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I like the idea. I like the threat. It's like, what if I'm making something, right? Okay, Matri gate matrix expansion. That seems to be the build order here. Oh, the pylon block on the natural as well. Love that. That's cheeky. Because that's going to keep the Zets home, right? I mean, you'd think. Yeah, there you go. Kranken is going to focus it down now. Gets a cancel off right before it finishes. So he gets the money back. That's going to be towards his own expansion, of course. And I think after this gateway finishes making the third unit, you just hold for... Uh, you, you cut military production for the time being. This is only 50 minerals per Ecclesiast. So it ends up being pretty cost efficient or reasonable, I guess, in order to do that. I saw um, we had a new person st uh, try the game earlier today while I was snoozing. Uh, apparently, I think it's a uh, Isagiro. It's a gyro. I, I Z gyro. I don't know how you pronounce that guy's name, but anyway, that's an interesting name, right? And so uh, I do like this play uh, from from uh, from what we see here. But it was funny that I saw Arbu's mention. Uh, I guess like the Ecclesiast Zealot thing. Uh, caught him off guard. You know, he was still he was still new. He's only been playing A versus AI and stuff. And the Ecclesiast Zealot uh, being really, really powerful and uh, being, like, virtually unkillable, I imagine, is uh, is what it was. I think he was playing Z Zerg versus Protoss, if I remember the what I was seeing correctly. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. That's, that's interesting. I like that kind of thing. Now, unfortunately for uh, Hit'em Up, I don't know if he knows this, but I'm pretty sure this is not... I'm pretty sure you can walk through this. I could be wrong, because I haven't actually tried a walling on this map, so I don't know how it is affected, but I'm pretty sure the Biotic Bastion and the Gateway are, do not make a sealed, like, tight wall in that sense. Uh, but anyway, it's still pretty easy to... Like, if you funnel through that, the Matrix definitely will, will deal with it. So it's not like it's a weak position. It's just kind of interesting. We do have a Vornath coming. When you see a situation like this with a wall, you are kind of incentivized to go for an Ovaleth for drops or go for some kind of air attack. Lovely Legion Air Scout to see the, the Vornath be made. So I do think that uh, Hit Him Up is going to be a, much more aware of things, right? He pops over, he sees that Scribe has been chasing the Worker Scout. It's not going to get another Burrow off without uh, losing some health. Yeah, you can see the Ecclesiast marching over to stamp out the invasion. The Shambler tactic of burrowing your Worker in some tricky spot. This, In this case, it was for a re-scout and, and not for uh, seeing when the army leaves. But still, I would say you could probably constitute that as a Shambler move. Why not? Why not? Uh, but yeah, cool stuff. Always nice to hear that new people are playing. And uh, hopefully they, they don't look at it and think, oh, god damn, I'm playing these people who have been grinding hundreds of games and I can't win. Therefore, uh, I guess I'll just rage quit. Because <laughs> that's, that's always a risk. I mean, if that happens, what can you do? Uh, but shout out to people who want to learn and, and who want to play. We got Crank it now who's been doing that quite a bit. And uh, Arbuz as well has been doing that quite a bit. So always good to, go, always good to shout them out. It, it was really cool to see him... Uh, take hit him up down to the wire uh, in that game on Paradise. Man, that was a crazy. That might be one of the most hype games ever made, ever played in uh, Cosmonarchy. So, just wait until we get those two v two weekend tours going. You know what I mean? I was talking a little bit about what that would look like. Um, I think if we were to uh, raise something like you know three hundred dollars or two hundred fifty dollars or something like that, um, at any time we do that, we ha I can achieve. I can run another weekend tournament basically because uh, i have to make it so that i don't need to work on a sunday like uh so that's where most of the money ends up going and the other part of it is the prize pool right so it's like covering a little bit of my time costs and also uh covering the prize pool for the the tournament uh so if you're planning on playing in the tournament and you wanted to donate towards that a portion of that will be in the prize pool which you then have the opportunity to, to earn back and stuff so uh it's not entirely a loss on that department but uh, that, that was something I was thinking about because, you know, we keep talking about like, oh, when's the next tournament? And I want to do the next like big Acropolis tournament, obviously, but I also want to do these like 2v2 tournaments. I want to do these uh, different runs. Uh, Hit'em Up was talking about like a bit of a Clan Wars thing that we should do that's similar to the, um, I think it's similar to like the daily uh, leagues that we get played uh, in the Korean Brood War scene, uh, StarCraft 1 scene. So that could be kind of interesting for sure. And, you know, I think... Uh, 
everybody always, like, everybody's been playing pretty commonly. Like, uh, there's no shortage of replays to cast. We've got new casters. Uh, Mesquery joined the server yesterday, and he's uh, starting to uh, look for replays and stuff. And Neblime's always looking for more replays for his uh, efforts as well. By the way, Neblime, if you're watching this and you want to use any of the games that I'm casting on your cast, I don't know how good that would be, but I'm sure some of these games would be pretty interesting to do that for. So if you see anything, feel free to, you know, let me know and... Uh, or, or grab the replay or whatever. Don't Just because I'm casting it now doesn't mean you can't cast it yourself. We got an Argosy coming with a Solarian, so I should probably stop talking about logistics and casts and stuff, but uh, just uh, just letting you guys know, there's some movement on that front as well, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do. Uh, it, it will probably end up being a, a crowdfunding, like, donation goal uh, metric or whatever. I'll, maybe I'll set it up for the stream so everybody can see what's going on there. And then, you know, as often as we get it, no pressure if we don't, uh, no pressure if we can't for any particular uh, situation, but as often as we get it, we're good to go, and uh, we can run the tourneys. Now, this Obeleth comes in and scouts the gateway count, but I don't think he's seen the Argosy, and the first Solarian is about to pop out. Now, the horde of, of tier one Zerg units has just descended upon that poor Zealot in the bottom left, so there will be a fourth base operational for Crankendow, but he does not have tier two, and he's only about halfway there. Oh no, he's actually got a, I was thinking of looking at the wrong player in terms of Vespine. Yeah, he's, he's got a, enough for tier two in just a moment here. We'll see if he ends up doing it. It would only make sense. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Okay. So his tier two is on the way. Uh, he does have plenty of tools to deal with the ground army, but that's not the scary part. The scary part is, can he get, you know, Vithralis out fast enough to deal with the Solarian, if that's what he's going to go for? Is it going to be Viths or is it going to be something else? Now, I am very interested in that idea. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but I would love to see... Uh, what, what Shambler's corpse is thinking, you know, it's, it's roll turning over in his grave because, uh, Shambler, I think he's been quoted as saying that like Protoss air is really weak or whatever. Uh, but obviously I'm only being a little bit silly because if you're, if your enemy's only now gotten to your, getting tier two and, uh, you've got the Solarian out really fast, I'm sure it, it, it beats a lot of things, right? It beats a lot of things. So we do have an engram coming up on the top left position. This will definitely help fortify that spot. We do have a Hydrath den on the way. So you know what? Crankendow will have some opportunity to respond to this, right? It looks like he's gonna get the Swamp anyway, which gives him access to the Teth Zorakors from the Izirakors. That's the drain tank sort of unit that walks forward and deals splash damage and heals itself for based on damage dealt. So you can imagine it ends up being pretty effective. Now, this is gonna pull Crankendow's attention away. There is no follow-up attack, but that would be a very big risk, I would think. He has some nice Zethrakors out for scouting. So he kinda knows there's no other attack coming and he can just, you know, he doesn't, I would still be nervous about A moving everything to deal with this, but uh, you know, that's fine. It does confirm that the base is up again, which is good scouting from hit him up. Uh, means that maybe he knows that he's on a bit of a timer uh, for how long his Solarians can work for. I think if he had attacked with the first two Solarians, it would have put Crankendow in quite the bind. Um, but I can see why he also wants to maybe wait a little bit. He hasn't taken his traditional third, instead going for the top left as his third. Uh, so that's interesting in and of itself. Spire on the way as well. So we could end up seeing like Vith Muta uh, versus the uh, versus the Solarian. Jackie Langsky had a lot to say about Mutas very recently. And Veek was looking at some of the numbers and wondering if they were over nerfed or not. I would say I'm sure the Muta has a use right now. Whether or not it's supposed to be a core unit or very epic, impactful unit, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I'm, I, I feel like the problem is I've, I've heard people complain about the utility of a lot of units, and then somebody like Crankadel will come in and be like, oh, everybody thinks Liralisks are bad. Oh, everybody thinks, you know, Protathlores aren't very useful. Uh, let me show you how they're actually a meta unit that should be used in almost every game. <laughs> Uh, that's just been the vibe. So he's actually making those Lira lists right now as we speak. We did see him use those to great success in the previous match. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm interested in what we're going to see when the Solarians finally descend. The fourth one is out. The Crucible enchanting the Argosy for faster production rate on that. And uh, obviously it's going to speed up the attack speed of that Matrix as well for whatever that's worth. We got gas caps coming, capping all the guys. There's still no base over here at the uh, traditional third. Nothing south of the natural so far for our corpse here. Hit him up. The corpse of the Shambler. I like the idea that he's just puppeting his corpse now. If we see him type, we know what's up. So no uh, Matrable Nest here for Crankadow means that he doesn't really have as much chase potential with things like the Ensnaring Brood. He's got a lot of Lachizalisks, though. I feel like Lachizalisk Liralisk is actually like the Crankadow trademark. But here we go. The Solarians are revealing themselves defensively. And if I'm Crankadow, I'm sitting here thinking, oh... 
I gotta go all the way back home now. And indeed, it looks like that's exactly what's happening. Counterattack with a bunch of Zealots. I like the idea of the run by. They will be able to cleave through these circuits. There's nothing here to defend. A couple Quasis can move themselves over there at the very least. But at the same time, Crankado has to think to himself, what is the play? How do I respond to this threat? I have the Swamp. I'm gonna make 12 Skither cores. That's a, a, a move for sure. That is a, a correct move. And the Solarians are so slow that even though they're coming over here to try to pick a couple of units here and there, I mean, we could see a lot of Spraits being added. In fact, we do see that in the bottom left. That's going to kind of isolate where the Solarians want to go, or at the very least, delay them if they're going to try to commit the attack. we got Zealots carving through a bunch of gas miners. That needs to be resaturated as soon as possible for our buddy Crankendow. Otherwise, we're going to be in a bit of a tough pickle. Vithralisks can be made at any point. Solarians moving over to the other side of the map. Nothing in the main for defense virtually. So if that's where they end up going, that will be beautiful. But at the same time, the Avaloth and the Zeth over here scouting around... I don't think they see, they do see it. Okay, it has been spotted. You know, uh, the jig is up. Crankendow will be aware that that's where the Solarians are going. He's got a lot of Lyralisks. I would love to see him just take the ground army and march on some place. But remember, there's a little bit of a ground army over here and there's a hell of a lot of static defense. This is a tough spot for Crankendow to be in. And he doesn't know just how far uh, the, the cookie has crumbled when it comes to that static defense stuff. He still doesn't have any Vithralisks going instead for pure Skith. I don't know if this is the right play. He is going to need to rely on the, gr on the ground support. He needs those Lyralisks to come on in with the Skiths. Otherwise, he has no chance whatsoever. And the Iral Iris will be focused down. Dropping very rapidly. It will be taken out. Now, again, when you have Zerg tech, you obviously have the opportunity to still make this work a little bit. But is it going to be enough? We don't actually see a great focus fire here from the Lyralisks. They're better at dealing with the uh, all the stewards as opposed to the Solarians themselves. But a very impactful snipe. And Crankendow obviously is down in terms of worker count. He's got the same base count as his opponent now with this traditional third finally being taken. And look! This is another base that's going to be set up. So I think even though the Solarians might not win the game... I mean, he's going after it, right? He's going to add some Empyreans as well which makes a lot of sense. The Avaloth scouting and revealing that indeed another base is being taken. So we've got Crankadao sitting here thinking, I need to retake my tech. The Scythercores are going to dive in. I did not I did not expect the Scythercores to even try that with no Viths. Remember that the Scythercores are heavily gated by armor and the Vithralisks burn armor. So that would have been, I think, the, the great play. In fact, that's what I thought he was making the Scyth for because the Scyths turn into Viths. You know, they even rhyme. It's almost like I tried to make that particular one... Um, intelligible or, or understandable, unlike some of the other <laughs> options. So going up to six bases attempted, actually gonna go and see if he can take upper nine as well as lower nine. Ambitious, but I can't fault him for it. He's got a lot of minerals in the bank. He's just about to achieve tier two again. I wonder if that's not a bit of a mistake. Does he need tier two right now? He has all the tech that he could want. I guess he doesn't have Alcag and he doesn't have uh, Matravel. So those two structures he's missing. It would have maybe behooved him to build those really quickly when he sees the tech snipe in order. Ground army, very underwhelming right now for this level in the game, but still more than enough to deal with this base if it's left unchecked. Lyralisks charging up, they're going to isolate that, but now the Solarians and the Empyreans are moving over there. Massive amount of workers have already been pre-transferred as that Nexus warps in for the fifth base for hit him up And he just simply pulls his ground game back. Sure, this base is going to get uh, cancelled over here. Oh no, it's not even going to get cancelled on that side, but uh, upper nine goes down. Scribe can still do some proxying. A little bit of static defense over here is more than enough to deal with these couple zealots. But what do you do about the threat? What do you do about the Solarians coming on in? There's not that many Sprites over here, and they're not even mostly upgraded. Larvos being picked off. Just going after the production. That's a very heavy gas sink. In fact, yeah, it looks like Crankadow didn't even bother scaling up his tech. But if he ends up losing the Spire, yep, that's a permanent loss until the Iral Iris is back. He loses the uh, Calcure Lake, that's the same thing. 16 skips are about to engage with no Vith support. Still no Vith support. This is a critical, I would say a, f a flaw in the plan here for Crankendow. Definitely something that he's going to want to try next time he finds himself in this situation. Fairly non-standard position, all things considered. Who would have guessed that the Solarian Empyrean Menace would have been how Hit'em Up chose to path through this game? A very, very non-standard thing. Didn't get scouted very fast at all. In fact, he didn't even know about it until this Argosy had already made four Solarians without even needing or using the uh, the Crucible. That's how long it took, right? Bit of a scattershot attack over here. Still going to do some static defense damage. Going after the pylon. Great choice. If that pylon ends up going down, he's going to have a little bit easier time cleaning house, but instead... It looks like he's just going to evict himself. One Rilla Rokor attack away from dying, by the way. Absolutely could have happened there. Upper nine will be in danger, but first he's going to go after lower nine. 
And only two Lakizalisks, no static defense. If that was different, I would think, like, maybe he can hold that. A lot of Lyralisks have arrived. And you know what? The Empyreans have less armor, so maybe they can be felled by this position. You can see the stewards starting to uh, crumble and fall with all the Skithercores and all the Lyralisks. Not doing very, very nicely here. Crankendow undeterred. He has so many Lyralisks, and he is going to isolate all of the Solarians out of having any power, any po any power whatsoever. The pylon has been destroyed, so no static defense shots, and it's just a question of can he deal with all the Empyreans. He still has no Vithralisks, and his upper nine, lower nine are completely taken care of, so he's back down to just being able to take the base north of his main. And the Empyrean count is still high, only losing one Empyrean, maybe another one with the bounces. There we go, down to only seven. The Lyralist count, the Hydralist count is still here. He still has 40 or, or about there. And I feel like maybe this might have been enough to at least kill this base and reset. We're not out of the woods yet, folks. This game is still live. Man, I thought for sure Crankendow was not going to be able to keep up with this position. But he, kept, he keeps all four bases going. And there's the sheer number of units are enough to deal with all the stewards. The Empyrean's going back to the drawing board. Not very good versus the ground game. Iral Iris remade, finally. Man, keeping this Calcure Lake alive was so important. If he did, if he had lost that, that would have really changed the whole complexion of the game. I think he would have just been out of it. Even still, not necessarily in the best of spots. The ground army, still powerful. Epigraphs coming out for single target damage. Not sure that we need those of all things, but, you know, I'd love a Didact just to stasis and recall and stuff. That would definitely go a long way. He has the Vespeen for it. And at any point, he doesn't realize this maybe, but you can build over K-Griff. There's no generator there. Ground army going to move over here. Bully some of the quasis before getting overwhelmed on the return uh, front. You can see 21 Lyralisks. Well, some of these are, uh, some of these, I guess, are not Lyralisks, but still. That's, that's crazy. That's, uh, that's an absurd number. All right, well, what are we doing next? What's, uh, what's going on next then? A lot of wardens. Yeah, you can you can build the nexus. We changed it. We made the game not stupid. You can build the nexus right now. You don't have to wait for the K grit. Already has the uh, air force over here. Kind of recognizes this is an important base since he has lost his uh, other fifth. So upper nine will be his new one. And saturation beginning on Crankendow's side. Dude, this is a banger game. This is uh, this is going nicely. A lot of gateways. At any point, we can see a lot of units being made. It's going to be 11 zealots. That's clearly fodder for a run by. 155 workers and counting for hit em up. Has the worker advantage up by 20. Both players on the same bases. And look at that. There were no gas caps except for, I think, this one over here. This is the only one that got capped, and that was obviously the one that got destroyed. So that might be something Crankendow thinks about doing. Adds the Alcag. You know, we could see tier three. He's almost got enough money for tier three right now. And I feel like that might be exactly what he's hoping for. But Hit'em Up is going to have to allow that. And I'm not so sure Hit'em Up wants to. I don't know if he's even aware that that's cooking. Where are the Quasilisks? Where are the Zorius? We need to see a little bit more on that front. But it looks like for now, it looks like for now Hit'em Up reconsidering his options. He's got the Epigraphs. They move a little bit faster. Continuing, he's adding more Solarians to the field now. His Zealots should just engage here. They can't escape without taking heavy damage. Would love for his ground army to just take the fight there and cover the rest of them retreating. Not going to happen. 34 Lyralisks. 34 in production right now. Throwing caution to the wind saying, screw my tier three. I can just win. And you know what? If he pinches off half his ground game and just attacks in to the upper nine, I think he's got it. Three Lakizalisks are positioned in this spot. Lower nine going to be taken by Crankendow. Biddy B smiling ear to ear as players are attempting to share this position. All right, the dive is going to come in with the air units. Very, very scary fleet right now. The Lyralisk count is absurd. He's got more, he's got 80 plus, 80 plus just on the Lyralisks. And there it goes. Atros destroyed. Is the flank going to be too much? We've got the Magisters out trying to increase the attack range of everything else. Engram's over here for splash damage. That's going to be very important. Crankendow doesn't want to take a fight in this spot. This is not the spot for him to take the fight. He's adding more gas caps. He spent down all of his Vespine on something. I'm not quite sure what it was. Oh, it was El Maxilisks for the, for the anti-armor. Not a bad shout, but can he get it? Can he make it happen? I feel like there's just too many air units for that. Would have loved to see that be a tier three push instead. Or again, 
Vithralisks. Would have been a great option. What a bloody fight. Lots of dead zealots, lots of dead Lyralisks. But at the end of it all, he stands tall. He's got a big army. Can't exactly take it in any additional bases. But he can still try to posture and deny. You look at this, head him up going after it yet again. He's adding Stargates at this point. Adding Stargates. I think he wants Gladius. He's like, yeah, screw these heavy air. I'm just going to go for the Gladius at this point. <laughs> Five Stargates in production right now for hit him up. Need to see, definitely need to see gas caps at this point. You can see the mineral, uh, the mineral quantity is very, very high, right? Dude, the air fleet is just enormous. And look at this, the Nexus getting established here. Immediately gonna get seized upon. Canceling every structure at, uh, one by one instead of, you know, maybe the way you would think. I love the scribe bullying, he's like, if you're gonna if you're gonna try to take this face from me, I'm gonna try to kill you, knock you into the corner. How about this attack though? We've got a huge force descending on the third. I think it's gonna get destroyed almost immediately, and there it goes. The Lakizalus can need to borrow the Aral Iris, kind of frontlining here. I don't know about that one. I love trying to take this face. This is that is cheeky. But you know what? If you could get it up, you could put a lot of static defense in there and impinge the air movement. It's just uh, quite unlikely. It's like this back and forth of like who can get their sixth base up faster. They both want this lower nine, but hit him up is totally given up at this spot. He's like, yeah, screw that. My ground army can't respond fast enough. GMM. Hmm. Gum. Maybe it was hmm. Yeah, I guess it was the G is right next to H. So now it's Galadius. He's adding Panoptus. I mean, he was probably just like throwing shit at the wall. He's like, yeah, whatever sticks at this point. But Panoptus are pretty good for base snipes. You can roll in with them and just snipe out the Hatros and leave. Especially if you bring some Auroras for the uh, Avenge and stuff. Or Vassals, right? When they die, they speed everything up. But that requires a different structure. Okay, we've got a lot of Kagralisks out. Those could be a little bit more efficient at this situation. They're kind of like, you know, when it comes to an Omni attacker that can shoot up and down, they're kind of like a discount for Tathalor. Now, we've got this very long line. I mean, am I supposed to make anything other than this, the thumbnail? Hello, the forces are just immaculately large, and we've got more reinforcements streaming on in from that left-hand side, many of them unmorphed, and the mutations are gonna get end up destroyed by hit -em ups forces. His ground game has been whittled down. He's got more units to contend with over here, but the Air Force is impenetrable. Just look at the number of airships for the Protoss. And there's still no Vithralisks. There's still no, nothing there. It looks to me like these little cute little lens flare impacts of the Magisters are a nice little sign of the times. I think Krankendow is about to have to call GG, losing the lower nine for the umpteenth time. His army wiped. Hit him ups on the board, and that means that game three is for everything. Everything. I like what I'm seeing, man. That was a hype game. Let's see what happens in the final. Ladies and gentlemen, Krankadao is back in the top right as none other than the Maroon Zerg. I don't even need to check, but I will for you guys anyway. And in the bottom right, we have the... Surely this is Glacial, but it's probably like Electric Blue or something. Terran for none other than Shambler's Corpse, a.k.a. Hit him up. It's Glacial. I finally got Glacial, guys. I'm so fucking happy. And also it's Forward Stuckade. Uh, let's see what Hit him up can do. Let's see. What Crankendow can do. Is this, you know, do we get like the, the heater, you know, macro, two macro games, uh, you know, hit him up trying the, the tier one bio for all eternity and Crankendow trying the, uh, well, the, the the no vith strat versus heavy air for all eternity. And and then we got into this game and it's just a, a slugfest. I've seen Crankendow, like, I, I think he's practiced some stuff versus, if I'm, if I'm not incorrect, he's practiced it versus Terran mostly. A different build than... Uh, what we normally see out of Zerg. And I, I'm being vague on purpose because I don't want to leak his strat or whatever. But uh, I, I don't know. Like, I, I wonder if anything, if, if the Zerg players feel that anything other than Larvosk into Pool or Pool into Larvosk is the is the valid opener, right? Like, uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Is, is Hatch first just dead? Nobody ever wants to make a Hatch on the first uh, in, in the first situation? So sad if that's the case. All right, the Kagrin arrives. And remember, uh, the Mason's going to be over here to ha harass, and this is intentional because we got a Harakan coming out, a second Harakan coming out. And as Crankadow arrives in here, he's going to see that there's nothing over. I would start a second uh, Kagrin if I'm in Crankadow's shoes, uh, but, you know, every little bit counts. Maybe you just turned this into a circuit. No, he's going to go for the Larvosk anyway. Here comes Ahmed. Oh, no. 
this is going to be painful, I feel like. Burning down the Kagrant. Not going to have any armor there. Going to need to defend that. Going to need to defend that. A, a larva dies in the background. That could actually be consequential. Can, can only make two pairs of Zeths now. Second Nakhmed has arrived. Nice little surround going on here for the workers. Hasn't lost any yet. There we go. Losing one, but he loses the Larvosk. So now we are in deep doo-doo. Now, if there had been a second uh, Harakin still alive at this point, you could even see Hit Him Up do some nice damage there. It is going to be workers behind this. Not that uh, Hit Him Up is aware of that. And now he's going to rotate the stockade back into a defensive position. Looks like he's going all the way back to the main for it. And wants to defend versus the Zeths. We're fearing a Zeth flood behind that, right? Will Crankendow just turn the, you know, pull the trigger. He's back to harvesting Vespine, so I guess he just wants to go for the Larvosk again. Although in this spot, you might think about going hatch first. <laughs> Maybe that's the way the time you go hatch first. You go hatch first if you lose your Larvosk. <laughs> All right, Zets are going to think about moving forward, but there's three Harakans already in there. The one Maverick here for the ranged fire support, and you can see the Zets finally getting in. They just want to scout. They just want to see what's going on, and at best, maybe kill a single worker, but uh, I don't know that that's actually going to happen. Bringing one down to half HP. They can, be still, they can still be pretty deadly, even though workers have a higher uh, HP amount. You can see the stem moving backwards. All right. Well, with all that said, it looks like the Larvosk first will still be intact. Uh, well, no, I say that, but Crank is actually moving his worker over to take his natural. He's finally going hatch first. That should be the thumbnail, honestly. Just Crank going hatch first. That's uh, the title. <laughs> I, that, something about that is very appealing to me. But of course, we saw that epic fight with the, all the air units and all the Zerg units. It's, it's good. It's good, boys. We got this. We are all going to make it. Unlike these uh, Harakans, I imagine at least some of them will die. But that is a sacrifice Hit'em Up is willing to make. Zeth attempted a scout, but it was put down. And we have a quarry finally starting. That's an important thing to try to scout when you're fighting Terran, right? That makes sense for why the Zets made it through there. Are you going quarry? Are you adding more military? You know, more, more production instead. Krakenau has been very good at moving around with the... Uh, with the Zethercore, as you can see, the, the Harakens having a hard time actually dealing damage to the Zeths there. Not, not, not a guaranteed hit if you're moving around like that. All right, makes it all the way to the natural, sees that it's a treasury. Now charging forward with the Quasis. And the hatch finishes. The Larvosk finishes. He's got a second one, and this is probably for an Avaleth to transport it over. But maybe I'm wrong because the hatch is already done, right? That's actually a Larvos behind that. Okay. Zeth dealt with. The Harakans march away. They simply cannot be stopped. Except for one of them's already died, and another one's going to die to cliff advantage. Oh, no! Living with six health. Chad. Chad move. Like I said, they can't be stopped. And it's just a single stockade Cyprian. And look at this. The greed making a lot of masons out of the third quarry. Or the third production queue for it. Second quarry. All right. Well, I think we're in an okay spot for both players. We've actually stabilized. That. After that silly early game, we have indeed stabilized. Okay. Well, the Quasis are just going to kind of march around. We do have an Avalev coming for scouting. Mason transfer. Might, might have been a little bit uh, premature, but I guess he wants to saturate the gas. No, he's going after the minerals. He hardly has any workers on the on the minerals over here. That's a brood war transfer if I've ever seen one. Second and third stockades being added. Gas being banked, I would say probably for Covenant, but he's just queuing up more Cyprians for now. We'll see what he wants to do from there. Honestly, I think Mass Cyprian actually has potential versus Zerg. The problem is that when the Zorkas comes out, you need more Harakans to burn down the armor, but... Uh, before then, you can... Uh, you know, by Mass, I kind of just mean like the... You know, like 10 or something. I think they BTFO a lot of uh, quasi units. You can see the qua Actually, what, what's interesting about this is that the quasi is moving into the main. I wonder why. Uh, did he catch the move out with that is a, a question for me. Because there's only one Kagrim being made and it's only halfway done. So it feels like Hit Him Up does have an opportunity to maybe do some damage here. He's only got the one Harakin. But five Cyprians is enough to deal with a lot of quasis. So... Yeah, that Kagrin's definitely not going to get finished. Oh, trading over his uh, shots. Nice split here from Crankendow, but you can see they are still going to just get absolutely shellacked. 
trying to focus down the Cyprians, only gets one and still loses the Kagrin anyway. That second one also going to go down. We're going to see an evacuation as six pairs of Zets are made. Not exactly the tactic you want to use versus Cyprians. A fifth Cyprian does end up arriving. It was only slowed for a brief moment in time. But transferring the workers back, at the very least, he won't lose out on all of his economy. And look at this. I mean, they're going to go for it. They kill the Maverick. Maybe they'll kill another Cyprian? Yeah, they should be able to kill that one on the right. But that was very cost inefficient. You can see the value of the Cyprians. And now they're going to go in from behind the mineral line. Going to make it even harder for these Zets to be cost efficient. At least I said that. But at the end of the day, they will end up getting surrounded. So very uh, nice play there from Crankinetta. Eventually put down that Cyprian count. Uh, but as we see the stockade production even increasing, we had six more Cyprians in the back. We have a uh, nice saturation in the main again, and we're building that up in the in the natural. I would say that the ball is still in, in uh, Crankadow's court as far as how to come back into this game. It would be a comeback. He is definitely behind. But I don't uh, I don't think it's impossible. There's a uh, some time before hit him up can attack again. If he makes a mistake and tries to attack forward, he hasn't scouted the Zorkas. Lokizilisks could absolutely punish him. I love the positioning of the Avalet to scout out for the army leave. And if they go to the left side, the Zethercore will also see them. So that ends up being pretty good. But as of right now, he can kind of see defensive line being established. We've got two Covenants and a Star Pad. We could see drops, but I think it's most likely just going to be uh, an Anseal. We actually have two Vestries as well. I'm guessing this will end up being a Covenant when he's got the, the Vespine for it. All right, well, Crankendow... Has the Lachizalisks not moving out just yet. I'm going to go ahead and continue scouting around. Just on a patrol path between the left and right spots with that Zeth. Yeah, adding more stockades. Adding another Covenant. You can definitely harvest a lot of gas off of the, the two bases. Uh, Top Ramen was actually breaking down the maths. And it's about uh, at a fully saturated base with 24 workers on minerals. Assuming eight mineral fields and six workers on Vespine. So for a th total of 30 workers. Uh, you're talking about 220, I think he said 250 gas or 225 gas per, per base uh, per second. Or not second, per minute. And then uh, 1,600 minerals per minute. So put it into perspective how much more you get on the mineral front. So if, that, if those calculations are correct, and I admittedly haven't uh, taken the time to confirm them, but they seem correct to me. Uh, then you are talking about some really, really uh, heavy mineral amounts. And that does mean that you want to, you know, you get diminishing returns off of the extra workers in the minerals, uh, but you still want to do it and you still want to spend that minerals. So you sp spend that money. Find uh, units with a heavier mineral cost than Vespine cost and build a lot of them. Find mineral only production, expand your economy, cap your geysers, etc., etc. So that feels pretty good. One Zeth in the middle of the map going to be dealt with. One in the forward, forward position was also dealt with. Third base being established here. I saw him try to go for top left, but it looks like Crankinow wants to pull that worker back, interestingly enough. Just going to go ahead and saturate this base instead. Treasury for the third. We got many, many more Covenants. It's Covenant City over here. A lot of Savants being made. That's where most of the minerals are going right now. They do cost a lot of Vespine too, but uh, you can see him distance mining the Vespine. He needs to get that treasury actually landed. He forgot to do that. Instead, he's busy on the micro side. Immediately pre-splitting his Cyprians. You can see how much it means to him as the Lachizalisks try to charge on forward. And the Zoryus occupy the top half of the map. Honestly, I didn't think those Lachizalisks were going to be able to do too much, but the units were not on an attack move. And as a result, I feel like the Zorius are going to be just fine. But the armor rent from the Harakans proves me wrong. Only two of them left standing, and the Lakizalisks have to be BTFO'd as well. They are on the retreat. What are the units in production right now? One pair of Zeths, five Lakizalisks. That's all that Crankadow has right now. Should be enough to overwhelm the paltry force that's still left standing over there as another quarry goes up for Hit'em Up's third. Economy still favoring our Terran player in terms of the, the worker count. Lot of static defense being erected at the third base for Crankendal as he arms himself and prepares for tier two. Question is, will he be able to actually save his Vespine or is he going to be forced to playing a little bit more defensively and spending that Vespine earlier than he wants to? Charging forward. Many, many Lachizalisks here. One of them goes down. He trades a lot of damage and just kills a couple of Harakans for it. But so far, this is great. Only two circuits actually made over here. If we can stem those Mavericks, we can absolutely de de descend upon that and force a pull. Look at the Harakan count. They're going to deal with that Zorius. They're going to deal with these Kagrins. That is going to have to be dealt with here somehow. More Zorius on the way. The Burrow is going to come in here, and that will indeed save the day, I think. 
But you can see the risk there, right? You could absolutely see if that if that force is a little bit faster, if it had a couple more Mavs in it, or if it had these Eidolons in it, for example. A lot of this, a lot of things could have been different. Still a lot of Lakers. Tier two on the way for our Zerg player. Nothing for our Terra, and he's going to go for a fourth base and a fifth base behind it. So really trying to just use the the power that he's uh, the map control that he's uh, gotten and achieved through this Harakan hit squad over here, fueled with the Savants as well for the penetration. Very nice. I mean, he's destroyed, I want to say, like 3,000 minerals worth of Zorius already. That is just an absurd amount of dead Zorius. So, very great stuff. Each one of them not being quite 200 minerals anymore, but still quite a bit. I think it's 175. And with the fifth base on the way for hit -em up he is about to take a decisive advantage. Only a couple of Mavericks guarding this position over here. So, this base will probably need to be evacuated or... You know, at the very least, he's going to think about maybe sending an attack squad somewhere else. It's okay that he ends up losing the quarry. Obviously, it feels bad. But look at the response. A lot of Harakans and a bunch of other infantry units heading up over here for another backstab. Could be a very lethal move. I mean, there's just nothing over here for the Zerg player. He's caught in the middle of a tech transition. He's going to have to pull on back. You want to kill my quarry? Good luck, dude. I mean, you're, you're trading your whole base for this. Is it worth it for the quarry? Oh, that's funny. Apparently there's some kind of bugger. I mean, probably if you cancel it or something, you cancel the unit in there, it starts making the mason. I'll have to look into that. Look at the Harakan stack over here. He's had to evacuate his mineral line in the natural. He's got all the Lakas back, but he needs to actually get them up here. Only a single circuit. This is not where you want to be. Eidolons plus Harakans are going to shred this Iral Iris. And again, a game back to back. He's going to lose his tier two. Lake has come up to try to do some distraction plays, but I feel like this has been a critical error out of Crankendow to try to go after this base so heavily. He does shut it down, but at what cost? At the cost of 900 Vespine gas. And a lot more because the Lakers are dying. Well, the Calcure Lake was up, and Crankendow has proven that he can do a lot with uh, with the Lirilisks, so maybe that's enough for him. Transferring all the workers away from the main. Down by 50 workers right now. And now we've got more units coming on in to attack the third base. I don't know. This looks like Crankendow is kind of... He's been transferring all of his workers all of the different ways. And he's just never been able to stabilize after that attack. That's an unfortunate mismove. I mean, he loses the hatch at the third base as well. He can transfer them over to the fourth in the top left, but... That's about it. I mean, that's like the only move he's got left. Needs to reestablish that. Needs to make a lot of Lirilisks and needs to see if he can A-move before the uh, Terran bio stack gets too high. Adding more stockades, no tier two. Tier two is a dirty word for hit him up. He doesn't want it. He's enjoying just spamming out bio. And you know, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't enjoy that? Last game I said Biddy B was smiling ear to ear because of the bases and the way that the map turned out. This this game, I think it's, uh, it's Lundier, it's Green Eggs and Spam, it's Mirian. It's uh, Lolar Skates. It's all of our bio enjoyers. Really enjoying this game. I'm sure they wouldn't have minded if you went for tier two. But come on, dude. Tell me tell me, tier one bio isn't cool. I think it's working out splendidly. Tier two started. That should be another thumbnail. <laughs> this game, this this uh, this whole game could have had like three different thumbnails, honestly. Crank going hatch first, which is kind of clickbait. And then hit him up actually going for tier two as Terran. That's pretty nuts. And, of course, the, the the Mega Protoss game. All right, well, the Harakans getting a taste of their own medicine as the Lirilisks are indeed out. Precious resource, the only thing that he can actually make out of his Tier 2 since it has been sniped. But some nice cliff advantage is going to afford a couple of fadeaway shots. Look, a Harakan run by. They're going after the circuit instead of the hatch. I would have loved to see them just right-click the hatch, but they are going to have to fall on back. They won't have the opportunity. That wasn't exactly a run by, thinking about it a little bit closer. Oh, you lunatic Eidolon. Uh, I would have... That was actually a full-blown attack. Like, if that had amassed up a little bit more... I mean, he saw the opportunity. He went for it, but... That that hatch would have been 100% dead. So, the fourth base has been restabilized. At this point, we've got lower nine taken by hit him up as well as, of course, the bottom left a long time ago. So, he's up to five bases, as Crankenau is just barely reestablishing his fourth... Uh, well, his third base, but... Whatever. You guys know what I mean. Harakans are charging forward to try to hold the ramp. Gonna get some good initial damage. The army for Crankendow is really strong. But as these uh, Harakans offer themselves over to the Lirilis gods, they are starting to regress. I mean, the Eidolons and the Savants just sniping so many of them. 
They don't even need detection because Harakans are the detection. They charge forward to reveal those Lakizalisks, and that is just a total wash of all of those forces. Look, another max wave Harakan storm. Man, this game could have had five thumbnails. I can't believe what I'm seeing right now, dude. That's nuts. Trying to reestablish circuits, but there's no crowd control over here. Maybe he can try to hold it off. I don't even think he can hold off the attack on his third base. I think he's about to get cracked on multiple fronts and crank, says GG. It'll be Edamup taking the set. You know what? I never doubted. I always believed. Some very nice games. I think uh, Crankendall would have stood a much better chance in game two had he gone for the Viths. Uh, I think Vith Skith combined would have been great, uh, better than Vith alone. Uh, but Vith Lyralisk would have also been okay. Uh, and then I also think that he could have gone for mutas. I mean, he made the spire, but he didn't make any mutas. I, maybe he was thinking Cicralisks for the splash. Not necessarily a bad idea, but I feel like the, the mutas would have been pretty good. And then if you think about the way that game three went, the game that we just watched, man, I, uh, it, it just comes down to the army positioning, right? He allowed that flank to come in. He, he went after the, the treasury really, really uh, heavily, and it did not end up working out okay. So that's... Uh, a bit of a sl uh, slip up. He did message me saying that he thinks that like when he watches back his games, he just sees massive mistakes all the time. Uh, most of the time, I wouldn't say that there were like massive ones. I mean, there are mistakes that cost him. Uh, some of it's just knowledge. Like maybe he's not familiar with using Viths. But uh, they, that last game, I, w I can see where he's coming from. I mean, I still think uh, he could have maybe made it playable, but he would have had to. It would have been a massive deficit as soon as you let them kill your eye roll again. So we got to watch out for that. I mean, that's two games. Uh, not in a row that they played, but in a row from our perspective that I casted, where he loses his eye roll. Got to think about maybe we need to defend that a bit more. Uh, and, you know, scouting in general would have informed him about the different plays that were happening. Hit up's a pretty crafty guy. So gotta, you definitely got to scout that out and see what's going on. When you see, like, double-digit stockades in the main, you know that there's going to be a lot of bio. Maybe you just make nothing but uh, Lakizalisks for a certain amount of time. <laughs> see what you can do anyway that's it for me ggs we had some great games today i hope you guys enjoyed be back tomorrow for some more action